Also joining me from Immune Express this afternoon is Dr. Roy Davis. Uh, Roy, good to see you. Thank you, Dave. Pleasure to be here. So, Roy, we talked to Roslyn about the unique technology that's coming to market later this year. We're very excited to see that. Uh, we're going to be able to diagnose patients with sepsis much earlier in a more cost-effective way and save lives. Uh, but, Doctor, I'm interested in hearing about the patient journey um, upon diagnosis, I'd, I'd like to understand a little bit more about how a patient is diagnosed and then what the patient journey looks like um, when they're um, dealing with sepsis. Well, Dave, if I can start with just a little story to start off with. Uh, in 2001, I received a telephone call saying that my mom was in the uh, intensive care unit. Uh, about 18 hours earlier, she'd seen a physician. She was in a home for the elders and uh, had a fever and just didn't feel great. And they said, thought she might have the flu, weren't sure what's going on. And they checked a couple of things and then sent her back to the home. And 18 hours later, she was in the intensive care unit. And three hours after that, she died. And she died of sepsis. And it was started from a little bed sore that she had on her buttocks and uh, progressed to sepsis. And this is a typical story. Uh, patients present with symptoms that could be a lot of things. There are no immediate tests to make that diagnosis. A number of things we do but suspicion is the one that you have to have the highest. And so frequently patients are admitted and started on therapy before you have an actual final diagnosis. This is expensive and has its risks. Anybody who goes to the intensive care unit has things done to them and those carry risk. So these patients are put into a situation that could carry extra risk. So the diagnosis is difficult. Uh, patients are either undertreated, as was the case with my mom, or overtreated because we're not sure what it is, and they end up in the hospital uh, for two to three days before a final diagnosis is made. Immune Express uh, will, has developed this uh, test that will enable us to get an answer within an hour that says, yes, we have sepsis, and we need to treat this patient appropriately for that di disease process. Suspicion remains the high thing because it's a, such a, a variable presentation. Yeah. Now, doctor, is there a typical demographic of a patient that is diagnosed with sepsis? No, it's pretty widespread, but if you look at the younger generation and then the elderly, anything uh, less than 25 and those who are over 60 have a higher risk, especially those in the older group because of their immune responses, sometimes variable to the various diseases, and their risk for pneumonia and those kind of things that can lead to an early infectious process. Now, once the patient is diagnosed, and uh, of course, time is of the essence, and that is really where your technology comes into play here. Uh, getting that patient diagnosed early, getting them on a treatment protocol. But what does the average patient, patient journey look like? After diagnosis, what is the course of therapy? Uh, is it a standard course of therapy across uh, a patient that's diagnosed with this condition, or does it depend? Uh, we've tried to standardize it. And if anything's made a big impact over the last eight years has been the actual protocol, or the, what's called a sepsis bundle, that is applied to a patient who has suspicion of sepsis. Aggressive intervention, aggressive control of their blood pressure, aggressive antibiotic therapy. That carries risk with it. These patients are generally admitted to the intensive care unit, managed on intensive care unit for a couple of days and then transferred to the floor uh, to a ward and then discharged home uh, if their survival is there. Um, those processes carry risk and so it's nice to have a diagnosis that says yes I need to continue antibiotics then I can get the culture back at 48 hours and change my antibiotics appropriately, but I cover them with a broad spectrum to ensure coverage for any of the bacteria that may be causing the disease. So, doctor, what's the typical survival rate of a patient with sepsis today, uh, given the current test or not that's on the market, or the current way that the medical community diagnoses this condition? Mm -hmm. Over the last eight years, there's been an improvement in that uh, uh, prognosis. Uh, but if you look at all the hospitals in the United States, the mortality rate generally varies somewhere between 23 and 35 percent on the intensive care unit. There are some hospitals that perform much better than that, and there are others that don't. And so by standardizing the therapy approach using a bundle, having a diagnostic test such as septicide will really improve this process. So in other words, early diagnosis will save lives. Early diagnosis, aggressive therapy. And that's where Immune Express comes into play. Doctor, thank you for joining me here this afternoon. I greatly admire the work you're doing, and I look forward to this product coming onto market to save patients' lives. Thank you, Dave. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.